Okay, so now let's apply our warm-up skills to um, what it's going to be like when we divide um, polynomials, when we have polynomials and long division. So in example one, letter A, we want to find the quotient, and remember quotient just means divide. When we have a cubic polynomial, which is our cubic is right here, divided by a linear polynomial. Okay. So there's two quick things I want to cover before we move on, um, and these are kind of the general rules for long division for polynomials. The first is we want to make sure that both of our polynomials are in standard form. We remember standard form as being the polynomials that are in descending exponent um, form with our degree as our highest exponent being the first term that we see. The next part we're going to talk about is we want to make sure that whatever x's that we have that are missing, that we place zeros where needed. And we're not going to need that in letter A, but we're going to definitely need that um, in letter B for um, the now you try. So the now you try and example two, we're going to be filling in zeros, and we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. In um, letter A, we want to find the quotient, and the idea of dividing is that we're, we're factoring, right? We're trying to get something smaller, and so this is going to be the base of what the next coming lessons are going to um, expand on, but the idea is we're, we're trying to take this big polynomial and we're going to break it down knowing that one of the groups is x plus 3. So just like we did in our warm-up, we're going to set this up where our second um, polynomial is written on the outside and inside our little division box we're going to put the polynomial that we want to divide, the polynomial that we want to break up. Since this is in standard form we don't have to change anything around and every x from x cubed down to no x is all represented so we have so we don't in this case have to place zeros um, for letter A so I'm just going to fill this in To rewrite what I have here since it's already in standard form and we don't need to add zeros. And so now we're ready to divide. So with this um, division problem, on the outside, my linear function has two terms to it, right? We have the x and we have the positive 3. So to divide this, what we need is I have to pick a number up top that when I multiply it by this leading x on the outside, I get 3x cubed on the inside. All right, so I have to create a number that when I multiply it by x, I get 3x cubed. Another way to think about this is I have an x here and I have 3x cubed on the inside. So both of my leading x's, I have to figure out what numbers are missing from x to get me x cubed or 3x cubed. So in this case, I have 1x on the outside, which means I have 2x's missing from what I want on the inside, and I also have a 3 that's missing from this outside number. So since I need a 3 and I still need x squared, which I mean I need 2x's um, here, I'm going to go right above, and I know that the number I have to multiply to x to give me 3x cubed has to be 3x squared. So 3x squared times x gives me 3x cubed. Since I have two terms on the outside, when I multiply this number to my first x, I also have to take this number and multiply it to the positive 3. So 3x squared times x gives me 3x cubed, which is what I wanted. I want these to be exactly the same. That's why I picked 3x squared. And 3x squared times a positive 3 gives me a positive 9x squared. If I have two numbers on the outside, whenever I have a number up top that I'm multiplying through, I should get two terms on the inside. At this point, I'm going to do the same thing I did in my warm-up, and I'm going to subtract each of my terms. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed cancel out. And they should. If they don't cancel out here to give you nothing, then you pick the wrong number up here. So if this does not cancel a 0, then you need to go back and start over again because you want to pick a number up here 
that when you multiply it with this x, you get the exact same thing right below it so that they cancel out and give you 0. 17 minus 9 now gives us 8x squared. At this point, since I have one number on the inside down here, I have two terms on the outside, I need two on the inside to be able to compare with the two numbers on the outside. So I have to bring down my next term, which is a positive 21x. So now I can start all over again, right? This number on the outside, or the, the um, expression on the outside, x plus 3, I want to pick a number that when I multiply it by x, I get 8x squared. Another way to look at it is I have an x here, I have an 8x squared here, what's missing between the two? So the number that I would need to multiply by x to get 8x squared is going to be a positive 8x. 8x times x gives me a positive 8x squared and that should be exactly the same as my two leading values here. And then I go back and I take 8x times positive 3 and that gives me a positive 24x. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to subtract my two terms from each other. 8x squared minus 8x squared cancel out to give me 0. 21 minus 24 gives me a negative 3x. And I still have one more term to bring down, which is my minus 11. Going back through one more time, I have an x, I need a negative 3x. So what's missing here is a minus 3. So negative 3 times x gives me a negative 3x. Negative 3 times positive 3 gives me a negative 9. Subtract each of my terms. Just remember when I subtract a negative, that means I turn it into a positive, right? So if I'm subtracting a negative, I can actually make both of these positive. Subtracting a negative means I can make both of these positive. So negative 3 um, plus a positive 3x, those cancel out. Negative 11 plus 9 gives me a negative 2, and I have no other terms to bring down. So since I have one term here on the inside, two terms on the outside, I know that this is going to be my remainder. Okay, so the quotient, the answer you get, so you go back to the top, so you're taking your, your whole terms up top, so I get 3x squared plus 8x minus 3, and then I'm going to add, I always add my remainder over the expression that I use to divide my bigger polynomial. So this is your answer, for example, one letter A. All right, so why don't you take a couple minutes and see if you can get through the now you try letter B. And then in the next video, I'll come through and we'll set this up um, and do this one together. A little bit of a hint is you're going to want to make sure that you put your um, leading polynomial in standard form first.